Gritting up and getting set for the final race of the weekend, the Porsche City Index Carrera Cup. This one is all about tyres. Who's got what left in the Michelin stocks? Now, Craig Baird and Johnny Reed on the front row, they're on used tyres. Nick Foster on row two, used tyres. Alex Davison, car seven, second row of the grid to the left of screen in the number seven McElroy racing car. Two fresh tyres and two used tyres. Let's keep an eye on that mark during this race. Exactly. Now, look for the man with the green flag at the back of the grid. Is he Waves the flag now, the commencement of the start process. Similar system used around the world for this start. And when the cars are all the same, you need to get the jump. And it's Johnny Reed who's got an initial bite. Craig Bent now, he's on the outside. We jump on board with Andre Heimgart and the young Kiwi in the team. Kiwi car trying to round up Matt Kingsley, but Reed will lead through turn one. Bent blocks and covers the line at turn two to make sure that Davison and Nick Foster don't get through. Look at Heimgarten around the outside. Using all of the road, it turns into a bit of a funnel. You have to be careful. You do, and it was a very good start by Reed. Craig Baird was very conservative. He moved over to the inside to cover Davison. And the aggro that we spoke about a second ago will continue in this race with them second and third currently. We had a quick shot there on board with Michael Lochisano, one of... The elite class drivers, remember there's two fights within the fight. The pros at the front, the elite drivers in the mid-pack and down the rear. But it's Johnny Reed, the young Kiwi. He missed a round of his championship, but he's already third in the points. And this is round five of eight, so he's coming on strong and he's leading the way from Craig Baird, who leads the point score as we ride on board the Tag Heuer onboard camera in the Hunter Sports Group Porsche. It's a bit of a dive then, Aaron, from Alex Davison. It was a last break manoeuvre to be... Down the inside of Baird at turn 11. This will be a pretty healthy battle. Foster there in between Steve Richards and Alex Davison. Pretty good field of guys with these, these cars. They actually drive them very, very well. They achieve their speed differently to Baird supercars. They've got very good mid-corner speed, very good tyre with a Michelin tyre used in the series. Very similar lap time overall to the Baird supercar. Whoa. There's Stevie Richards with the rears locked and gets a bump from Heimgartner. And Heimgartner's a guy we talked about tyres at the start of the race. That was a spinner in the background. We talked about Heimgartner. He's on four new tyres all round. So look for that all-black Porsche. We ride on board now with the teenager, young Kiwi, still at school. He uh, jets backwards and forwards between Australia and New Zealand. But he's got pace because he's got good tyre quality in this last race. Davison right up behind Baird Foster. He just... See the slightly different line there on the way out of seven and eight. And that's Tom Tweedy in pit lane. He is another of the guys who was on fresh tyres for this race but started 10th but has got a problem. Davison in the gap. Whoa. In the contact. That won't go down well. If it was fruity before, it's fruity now. And it was a bit clumsy because he ended up using too much of the inside curb. And they made contact. You just don't need to make the body contact because you bend the steering. Very easy to put one of them out of the race when it's like that, or punch a tyre. And Foster's got a pretty good run on the back of Baird. He'll be looking to get down the inside down at turn two. So Davison by Baird, and Foster just having a little look there. Baird moves it over slightly. That was the big moment that we saw Steve Richards have last lap. Look at how close they are to the fence here. This is a great shot. And tagging onto the back of this fight, you've got Heimgartner, then Daniel Gorn, and then Tim Lay, who's making a one-off start this weekend. This is Richards at turn two. A little bit of a helping hand on the way while he recovered the laser plumbing and electrical car. That's there was, ah, oh, there's the spin. That was Shane Smolin, who actually, he won the elite class in race one earlier on in the weekend, but this was the move. So a little bit clumsy. See how it just ran over the inside kerb. Cars are very stiff, very stiffly sprung. So the Porsche ran over the kerb, bumped it wide, and that actually forced the contact between Baird and Davison. But have a look at the gap already that Davison has been able to build over Craig Baird. So Craig Baird's a bit of the cork in the bottle here at the moment because Foster and Richards and Heimgartner and Gort are basically in a train behind Craig Baird, the series leader. So we're on board now for a lap with Heimgartner. Remember, the lap speed is about the same as a V8 supercar, but they achieve it so differently. Listen closely, look at the body language. This is Steve Richards, very accomplished V8 supercar driver in the Porsche in front. Oh, big slide. A 
can't use as much of the curb as the V8 Supercar, so they're very careful on that curb and on the outside curb there. See, so they didn't run over it. You see the V8 Supercars all weekend have done that. This is this fantastic turn five and six, 140 kilometer an hour mid-corner speed. It's a replica of turn 11 and 12 at the Melbourne Grand Prix circuit. And this little complex, seven, eight, nine on the throttle, use all the road. And this is this fantastic, fast, 180 kilometers an hour through turn 10. And they get through their flat, different to the V8 supercar where they can get the car set, not quite as powerful. Big rear tire, and up to the final corner. See the sequential gearbox that the guys have got, very similar in terms of the way it actually works to the Viet supercar. And didn't quite come off there well enough for the tire quality that Heimgartner's got that Aaron reminded us of at the start of this race. He's got the best tire quality in the field and he couldn't get off the final corner to put himself in a position to get down the inside of Steve Richards. The Carrera Cup continues to flesh out these young stars of the sport. We're back on board the Hallmark Porsche with Michael Rochisano. And Michael's actually an Angel Flight pilot and Angel Flight's now the official charity of, uh, of Carrera Cup. It's a free transport for medically and financially disadvantaged people in rural Australia. It's a really great, great thing yeah. and it's great that they've got involved with, with Porsche Motorsport and the Carrera Cup categories. Looking ahead at Mark Sini, the two Hallmark Porsches, they've been in the series for quite some time. In fact, Mark holds a record for the most round starts in Carrera Cup. He's been there since it began. Now, Stephen Richards threw on Nick Foster in for position four. And it's Alex Davison who's the fastest man on the road at the moment. He skipped away from Craig Baird, just behind Daniel Gaunt in seventh. Then Matt Kingsley, Tim Lay, and Max Twig is the best of the elite class runners. He sits in position 10. So Johnny Reed's done the fastest lap of the race, a 14.90. Alex Davison on the previous lap was a 14.91. One hundredth of a second. This is the move from Steve Richards. He just capitalised on a little mistake from Foster. Coming out of turn six, this is the move. We're on board with Heimgartner to get the best seat in the house. And that was down into turn seven. And now Steve will have to have eyes forward. He needs to get his brain into catching Baird and not covering Foster. Very important racecraft part of this race now for Steve Richards, where you've got to set your sights on the car in front and not get caught up looking backwards. Johnny Reid there leading in car five. The Newcastle Knights sponsorship on that car. Of course, that's the car owned by Nathan Tingler. Tingler. Yep, correct. And Johnny missed the first round of the championship, but jumped in at round two and since then has been on a real roll. He's up to third in the championship points. And he's got himself an endurance drive too. Let's not forget, he's with Michael Patrizzi for the techno team at Sandown and Bathurst later on in the year. And in fact, he's one of four. This is Tom oh. Heimgartner and Foster, the young blokes, arguing over a bit of real estate. Foster was a bit cheeky then because you've got to give room to race. And when you break the car like that, both guys were already committed. And Foster didn't give Heimgartner enough road on the outside there. was very close to being in contact with the fence and the car. He did a good job to gather it up and to not end up making contact. This is it. So we're on board now with Heimgartner. He gets a run. Foster moves over a little bit. That's fine. That's all right. But he's locked the wheel. He loses the steering trajectory, which means the car moves around. It's not linear when that happens. And have a look in the background of shot now. This is Heimgartner down the outside. And as he locks the wheel, it turns left a little bit. And that, as I said, that was a little bit cheeky. Although he didn't really quite have control of the car, he may have given a little bit more road to young Heimgartner battling with him for position five. Approaching half race distance, it's Johnny Reed who leads the way. Alex Davison's the fastest man on the road. He's chasing in the Porsche.